for the British middleweight title. Did very well in that match. He also fought Mark Delaney and uh, was beaten on points over 12 rounds for the WBO Intercontinental title, whatever that may be. And unlike Paul Busby before him, he actually took Leif Kaiski the full eight rounds. Of course, Kaiski has been named as Steve Collins' next official challenger for the WBO crown. And a bit of an upset last time out for, or the time before last, I should say, against Carlos Christie. Flute beaten on points by Christie, who does blow a bit hot and cold. And the last time, of course, we saw Otka on Eurosport, he beat Jason Hart from England. At least this time, Otka's up against someone much nearer his natural weight, I thought Jason Hart was uh, outweighed quite a lot in that match. Anyway, back to the action. Otka, short, mustachioed. Andy Flute, still a fairly lively fighter. His best days are not really behind him. He's probably reached a plateau, though, but he's boxing quite well from it been a pro since 1989 made his debut in Stoke against Stinger Mason he won that one on points over six rounds he's also had the displeasure of facing Robin Reed was stopped in seven rounds by Reed Reed of course the reigning WBC champion at super middleweight and getting better all the time And Otka will be made to think here. Flute looks like he means business. And in fact, he's looked a lot tidier than Otka in this opening round. And a bit more ambitious as well. And at first sight, you'd think uh, Sven Otka was Tony Willis. The Scouser, of course, former British lightweight champion who boxed in the Olympic Games, I think, of 1984, wasn't it? Well, I'm going to give Andy Flute that opening round. Nothing particularly special from either man, but Flute looked nice and fluid. Into round two, then. And uh, Flute doing exactly the right thing here. He's just maintaining the gap that uh, Otka's not finding too comfortable. It's a gap he doesn't like. Some gaps, of course, are quite easy to close down and score from, but uh, Flute just maintaining that little extra half an inch. And I'd say he's got slightly longer arms than Otka. Well, so far, Otka has not scored with a clean punch in this second round, but Flute has. Don't get me wrong, I'm not get getting patriotic. In fact, I'm one of those rare animals that doesn't have many patriotic bones in my body, I'm glad to say, but uh, credit where it's due. Well, that was a glancing right hand, I think. Uh, nothing more from Otka. Hey, 
And of course, Ocko would have had a good look at Flute when Andy fought Bayer. And, well, Flute standing up to that, OK. And Ocko probably th feeling, well, whatever Marcus could do, I could do better. Well, and that's not the case here so far. Well, at best, I'm afraid that's a level round. Otka not doing enough to impress me, I'm afraid. Round three, then. And if 27 years of age. Otka, well, he's 30 now, so he left it quite late. Amateur far too long, I think, as so many were. But then again, you know, uh, maybe you don't know this, but to Germans, top-class German amateurs get paid a great deal more than your average or even your above-average professional. And so the incentive to turn pro just isn't there. They get signed on with big German corporations. They're on the books. They don't do a day's work. They get a massive salary from the firm, they get paid to box. And that's just the amateurs. How different, of course, to the Victorian oh. attitude adopted by our own sweet British ABA. It was a, well, that was inevitable, wasn't it, that uh, Andy Flute would pick up a public warning, something that uh, would not have happened to him probably in any other ring in the country, or sorry, any other ring in the world. But against a German in Germany who might just need an extra helping hand, that's what he got. There's a bit of blood as well on the hairline. Of well, Otka now looking a bit livelier. He's going to take another point off him in a minute. It matters not. Flute, of course, is the sacrificial lamb. Not another point for holding this time. So that's two points away from Flute's score. Not only that, he's actually losing this uh, third round as well before those point deductions. So uh, at the moment, it's 10-7. I've been a terrible critic, though, of these um, continental referees for many a year now, and uh, I'm afraid they don't do themselves any favours. So, 10-7 round then for Sven Otka. Thank you, referee. Cold 
unfiltered Miller Genuine Draft. Sport and Nissan bring the legendary Le Mans 24 hours roaring onto your screen. To mark the occasion, Nissan is giving away a stunning Primera GT and other exciting prizes. To win, call now. Nissan at Eurosport wish you good luck. Touch of replay here from round three. As we go into the halfway point of this contest, round four, there's Terry Tool saying, come on. I actually think that flute's doing very well, but the referee's destroyed his rhythm. He's also taken away his confidence and, uh, more importantly, taken away two unfair points from flute in round three. See, British referees, or good referees, I should say, not just British referees, get bad referees in Britain as well. I'm not mentioning any, any names. Um, but, uh, you know, good referees let a contest flow, have a word in the fighter's ear, and the last thing they want to do, really, is uh, start deducting points. But these Continentals, my goodness me, they jump on you. The slightest thing. I wonder how they ever get qualified in the first place. There's certainly not enough boxing occurs. Oh, I know how they get qualified. Of course I do. They actually referee amateur contests. And they do those very badly as well. Anyway, that's enough of that. Back to this. Otka's come out quite aggressively for this fourth round. that Bayer has. Stop. Stop. And Andy Flew used to be trained by his uncle Colin, who was uh, a pro at the same time as me back in the 70s. That's the last time I'm telling you for holding, says the referee. But, you know, what he doesn't appreciate is the fact that Flute is a professional, he's a good pro as well, and he's doing what it takes. The referee looks like he's walked into a few right-handers as well, doesn't he? So, a good round for Sven Opka, no doubt about that. Three points in front now. The big prize for Frimpton Wonder, round five. Penultimate round then, round five, both men wearing red. Sven Ocker, of course, is touched off with the gold and black, making up the German colours against Wolverhampton's, or Coesley. Coesley is uh, a borough of Wolverhampton.
Well, Ocker then took a fair right to the head, but came back with a body shot. Well, it takes two to tango, and Ocker as guilty as Flute for leaning on, on the inside there, as you can see. Why doesn't he just take a step back and disentangle himself? That's a nice stiff left from Flute. Wait. Wait. <laughs> this referee's getting very cross now, isn't he? <laughs> right, well, knock him out one more time and it's over, says the referee. Terribly intolerant, aren't they? They're just not taught right. End of story. <laughs> and I can see all you British referees who watch Eurosport boxing shaking your heads at this gentleman. He's from Berlin. I can't remember his name. Otherwise, believe me, I tell you. Oops, so daisy. Refereeing really should be fun, shouldn't it? As well as uh, a serious occupation, it should be something you enjoy. And this man has got the look of, uh, you know, he's got the look of someone who's having a thoroughly nasty time out there. Well, four points the difference now. One round to go. Here we go then, sixth and final session. Round three, of course, was the turning point for Flute. He hit the deck. No, he didn't. He had two points deducted for one for holding and one for a low head. Very harshly, I thought and he lost the round. So three-point gap opened up at that stage. And it's a gap that's got bigger as the fight's worn on. Well, you can uh, work that one out for yourself. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid, um, you know, to come down quite heavily on, on Ocker's potential. <laughs> Once again, the referee says for the fourth time, that's the last time, next time it's finished. Yes, yeah, so as I say, Odka's uh, potential at top level, I'm afraid, is uh, severely limited. It's been a scrappy encounter. 
They both wanted to win, but it's just not worked out that way, has it? It's just not been particularly pretty. <laughs> Once again, he says it's the last time. How many last times does this referee want? Of course, it's important for Andy Flute that he doesn't get disqualified because his purse would have been withheld pending an inquiry. Sixth and final round. It's been a win for Otka, no doubt about that, but uh, you couldn't in any way, shape, or form call it a good one. And Flute does his job and uh, lasts the distance. 59 54 for me, which of course is completely academic. Makes no odds. But a contest, I think you'll say, more uh, marred by a mauling referee. What a shame. Just time to remind you, we've got some more boxing for you on Saturday. Well, he does look like Tony Willis, doesn't he? Next, we've got Angus Loughran and his world. Andy will be back tomorrow as usual. Anyway, I don't even think he's ill. I think he's putting it on. I don't blame him having to go through this ordeal every morning. It's not just him, though. It's me as well. I'm getting blinks. I live with him, but nobody thinks about me. Of course we do, son. 